Dr. Greg Ellis. It was discovered in the late 1930s that if you were to feed humans just meat and fat, remove the carbohydrate, that you would re dramatically reduce their exercise performance. Now, this became the basis of the concept of glycogen loading. And the idea has been around for a long time, certainly since the turn of the 1900s, that carbohydrates were the primary source of fuel for muscle contraction. And that did not get questioned until the 1940s and 1950s, when it was discovered that fat was really one of the primary fuels. And in fact, it was not until the late 1990s that it was discovered that fat was really the primary fuel underlying muscle contraction. But the whole glycogen concept got into the public's mind, and this concept of glycogen loading came about. So if you depleted the body's glycogen, which is a stored form of carbohydrate, by preceding that process with a few days of just eating nothing but meat and fat, that you could get rid of all the glycogen. And then when you refed the carbohydrate, you could supercompensate, and the glycogen levels would increase, and thereby it was believed that performance would improve. And it did. It did, in fact, improve. Now, why did it get so bad on just meat and fat? Well, in the video I just did, I talked about the importance of the preceding nutritional state. So if the body became acclimated to burning carbohydrate, which it will if you feed it, and then you take the carbohydrate away and just provide meat and fat, your performance will just suck. There's no other possibility because the enzymes that process the fuel go away or are reduced in their quantity and rate of activity. The body's very efficient. It doesn't let things hang around that it doesn't use. So the enzymes that process meat and fat in contrast to those that process carbohydrates, and they are different, will go away. So we come back to the importance of knowing the previous nutritional state. So glycogen loading became very popular and it was developed into a regimen where one would just eat meat and fat for five days and then on the weekend supercompensate by eating a lot of carbohydrates to restore the glycogen levels. And of course it was believed that glycogen was the primary fuel. So you can see the number of errors in thinking that occurred here. The lack of an understanding of the importance of the preceding nutritional state, how it came about that it was believed that carbohydrate was the primary fuel for muscle contraction and thereby the importance of glycogen stores. Now, whenever you hear the word glycogen, you should automatically think storage. Storage. The metabolic pathways for the processing of fat and the processing of carbohydrates are entirely different and made up of different enzymes that can come or go depending on how one has been fed over the previous days and weeks and months. So that's very, very important. So if you are laying down and supercompensating and adding glycogen into your muscle stores and your liver stores, that means that you're storing carbohydrates as fat. So your body is automatically put into a state where the nutritional and hormonal profile is geared up to shove everything into storage. Now, food only has two choices. You can burn it, it's called oxidation, or you can store it. Food that is stored is not available to be burned. It's very important to understand. And what will happen is that you will get hungry and you will compensate by overeating. And this is one of the major reasons for the obesity epidemic we have now because of the constant consumption of a high-carbohydrate diet because it's believed that it's good for you. It's believed that carbohydrates are healthy and that fat is unhealthy. So the world is just riddled with misconceptions and misinformation. And it's just hurting everybody. 
And these ideas have become so entrenched in the culture that it's really difficult to overcome them. So my little video piece here will get seen by, who knows, not many, at this stage of my development, because I'm not that well known. And this message will only reach a few people and will soon be forgotten. And then the video will roll down the video list and by the numbers I'm seeing on my YouTube account, a couple hundred people will see this, maybe. So I received an email the other day about a guy raving about all the success he had on the low-carb diet and how much weight he lost. But he goes and eats and stores his glycogen up. He wants to get his glycogen up. So he eats some carbohydrates. Now naturally he doesn't feel anywhere near as good when he doesn't eat any carbohydrates at all. But he can't quite reconcile this because he's been told so many times and so often how good glycogen is, how important glycogen is to your health and to uh, exercise performance, to energy levels, because this is a, a common belief system in the marketplace. And it's, it's true for all, all athletes have been told this, this lie, this nonsense. And they believe it. And they have no way to dig out of it because they don't understand the basic biochemistry. Every time I ask some of my listeners or other individuals to provide for me a piece of biochemical information, that would elucidate what it is they believe, they never do. They can't. They don't know it. I mean, it's even an open book deal. Go out and open the textbook and find mm -hmm. out what it is that I asked. I just did this recently, and uh, one of the arguments that came back at me is that it was just unfair of me to do that because the responders on my Facebook page were not biochemists. Yet, they were acting as, in a sense, biochemist by presenting things based on their ideas and not upon the basic biochemistry. So the basic biochemistry behind this glycogen deal is that the interrelationship between fat and carbohydrates is that if one goes in this direction, the other goes in another direction. It's really all you've got to know. If you're storing carbs you're building fat because many of those carbs are getting processed and turned into body fat and getting locked away in storage. And this in turn leads to the production of eating because this is the primary stimulus in the cell that drives factors that determine feeding behavior that will be signaled by hormones and other pathways within the brain. So it's very important to get away from trying to even think about glycogen. You don't want glycogen around. Get rid of it. Burn it up. Keep it down. And that way you'll be able to turn your body into a fat burning machine, which is exactly what we all want. You'll have tons of energy when you adapt to this fully and it will work really well for you. So that's the basics behind glycogen loading. It was a contrived mechanism from day one. It did not consider the previous nutritional state and thereby it led to a whole bunch of information, misinformation, that has piled up over the years and everybody is just still doing it. I read about it all the time. It's called the ketogenic diet. Is the diet that one would follow during the week and then go on a carbohydrate supercompensated diet during the weekend. But it's what you want to do is be in ketosis. The ketogenic diet is the way to go. So that's what you should be thinking about. So that's the process underlying the glycogen mechanism. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.